Hey folks, it's Lisa Ziegler coming to you here from my little urban flower farm in southeastern Virginia with our weekly home cutting tutorial. We've been meeting here on Sunday evenings for I think this is week number six and um, you are not going to believe how much this garden has grown in the last week. So I have um, a lot to tell you about and um, so I'm glad everybody's here with me and so each week we've been meeting here and I've got my little table full of stuff here. Let's take a look. Um, what we're talking about is we are growing this little cutting garden which is a 3 by 10 foot cutting garden and I have actually and we'll look at the garden in just a minute here there's a diagram that tells you how to plant the seeds um, or the transplants whichever way you choose because you can go either way but I actually cut my garden in half so I have two um, three by five foot gardens so it is um, really coming along I mean you really are not gonna believe how much it's grown um, I had to actually net it um, earlier in the week and um, because the plants are just the heat has started we got some rain and it's really really going well so before we dive in um, the first thing I'm gonna do after I get through some general announcements we're gonna just go through view where we where we where we've been and then um, kind of look at where what was what's going on here today right can you believe I have a coat on it's June 14th and I actually took my shorts off and put on jeans and I have a jacket on. It's just a little, it's not cold, it's just cool. So anyway, so I wanna tell you, um, first off, we have a special on our blocking mix and nutrient mix. We had a special weekend run of 50% off. We've never done it before. I don't know that we'll ever do it again. Um, it's just really special, but it goes off at midnight tonight. So you really need to check that out. If you're a soil blocking person, um, that is just really a great deal. Um, and we do still have it in stock. We've sold a ton, but there is more. So just didn't want anybody to miss out on that that didn't know about it. And um, so this week we are talking about flower support netting which a lot of people aren't familiar with i think everybody can probably relate to um, having rain or wind just really knock your flowers down i'm actually going to move the comments over so i can see what you're seeing um, you can see my heliopsis over here is um, blooming beautifully um, so let's just review where we came from and where we are now so the garden that you'll see if you're just joining us for the very first time ever um, the gardenersworkshop.com is where you'll find everything seeds and any supplies that i mentioned and so we decided to plant our little seed collection so i built this garden where there was lawn and i literally just laid down cardboard according to the size three by five two of them and then I put rocks around the edge to hold the cardboard down. And that kind of created, made it kind of like into a container, like a raised bed, right? And then I gathered up all of the empty, not empty, unused large containers that we have all over the farm, big pots full of soil that I knew that I wasn't gonna be planting this year. And I literally dumped that soil into this bed and then we added some additional new potting soil and we added it at the rate of about 50% compost, 50% um, potting soil. Then we scratched in and added, according to directions, our crab and lobster dry um, fertilizer. You add that when you're preparing the bed. And so that is mixed into the soil, which is an organic based soil, so it really, feeds the microorganisms in your soil as well as feeds your plants slowly. So, we laid the cardboard, put rocks around the edge, filled it up with um, soil from various um, places, and then we mixed in the fertilizer, and then I planted. I actually planted transplants, which is always our preferred method. However, the seeds that are in this collection, which are the Benares Giants, um, which are the big honking zinnias, and y'all, I cut 
the first zinnias yesterday. Um, we're like three and a half weeks late um, and they're just scrumptious. Um, so the big mixed color zinnias, the lime green zinnia, which is separate from, they don't get quite as tall as the big um, Benaries mix. So there's a pack of Benaries giant mix. There's the pack of the lime green Benaries, um, lime green. Then, and it was my, actually it's my favorite. There is um, the little Oklahoma zinnias, which actually I think we have a bloom or a bud. That's the first one to bud up in our little garden here. Um, they're only about this big, but they add such excellent texture and a difference and variation, and that's a mixed color. Then we have our Pro Cut Sunflower. Um, orange is what actually comes in the um, collection, but I actually swipe, um, swapped mine out, and these are whites that I have planted in ours. Then we have coxcomb, and of course, um, what seals the deal for most people with these bouquets is lemon basil. Um, actually, lemon and cinnamon basil. So that's what we're actually growing. So we planted transplants. They got a really, really slow start because we had a really cool, long spring, but I will say that we have caught up now, y'all. It is just really, really crazy. Um, so, and I wanna encourage anybody that's growing this along with us, I'd love to see your photos. You can post it on this feed or just post it to our Facebook page. We'd love to share it with other folks um, if you're doing that. So, before we get up from here and start looking, I wanna show you a couple of things. Now, um, remember, we do have our pens back in stock. So every order gets a pen as well as our catalog. Um, we still have those available. So um, the girls are putting um, both of these items in every order that we get. I did put the link on this feed. Now all of a sudden, y'all, I'm a little warm, so I have to peel this coat off. It's that kind of weather, on and off, on and off, right? Um, so I did put on this Facebook feed the link to the netting that I'm about to show you and um, so let's just take a little look at it so why do you need to do let's talk about support netting for just a moment so why do you need to do it people often think that wind is the real culprit with laying flowers down um, and it can for sure but it is really torrential rain that really just wreaks havoc. And we have so many pop-up storms now with really heavy rain um, that net, without netting, um, you, you just don't wanna know the heartbreak. So um, if you've not been following along with us, you know, this year with the pandemic, um, not everything happened out in the garden as it should have, because during that time when it broke out, the pandemic, um, we kind of like sent everybody home and um, some of the jobs just didn't get done while we were figuring out what the heck we we're gonna do. Well, the cool flower garden only got half netted. Those are the cool season, spring bloom and hardy annuals. And I just can't even tell you how many blooms we've, every time it rains, I just like pull the drapes. I can't even watch to see what happens because they're tall, right? And um, I have probably, it's the biggest waste of time and energy and spirits um, because when part of your flowers go down in a rainstorm, first off, there is no bringing them back up and using them 99% of the time. And then, but you have to cut them out of your way because they're typically laying in the pathway or they're laying on what few straight ones are still there. So you have to cut them anyway, but you can't use them. Um, as I was cutting yesterday, the scabiosus, um, which is pincushion flower, which is, is it's taller than um, me because my eye level is about where most of the blooms are and taller. Um, I mean, it's just, I was thinking, here I am bending over, spending 10 minutes easily on each side of the bed, just cutting stuff out of the way so I could walk. And it was just because I didn't net it. And so flower support netting is, um, really really useful and once you do it right and once you train yourself to cut through it um, it's super duper easy and you can reuse it from year to year and I will show you what I'm talking about when we look at the bed 
but when your garden is all said and done, you know, at the end of the season, um, when you've been cutting it every week, if you want to try to save this netting, which you can save it from year to year, um, all you have to do to do that is to not, and this is where people, um, and I mean, we're guilty too, this is what happens. So you cut your last bunch of flowers, you know, whether it's frost or whatever, um, and you think, oh, I'll come back and get the netting off and pull the stakes out and pull the plants out or whatever the next step is. Well, the next thing you know, it's like three or four weeks later and you think, oh, now I'll go get that netting. No, you won't, because let me tell you what'll happen. Not only will the plants just um, continue to grow, um, but the weeds will start growing. And once they grow up through that netting, there is no saving it. So the simplest, quickest, and easiest job is that as soon as you decide your cutting garden is done, is to just cut anything that's growing up through the netting and that way you just literally lift the netting up off you can roll it up fold it up whichever way um, and we close it together the little roll with a piece of masking tape and actually write on the tape like how long it is so you know what bad it goes on um, so that is just super easy so it'll actually last usually about three to four years um, because once the plants get grown up through it. They really protect the netting from the UV rays, which is what breaks it down. Um, so flower support netting is grossly underestimated. I, um, I read a lot on social media, a lot of advice from folks that have been farming for a year or two or three or maybe even four or five um, that say that they, you don't need to net, um, that it's just not really necessary. Well, they just haven't had the right weather yet. Um, as a commercial grower, it is high risk, um, and in your home cutting garden, it's even worse because you only have the small little garden. You want to preserve every bloom that you possibly can. So in my opinion, it's even more important in the cutting garden for the home gardener. And as we get to these, none of them's big enough to, to cut yet, um, but I will show you how to cut through the netting. And it's really simple. And I wanna give you a tip that I thought about when I was making the first cut on the zinnias yesterday. Um, and we don't, we don't, haven't talked about seed starting and I'm not gonna talk about seed starting, but one of the things that we do do and we talk about a lot in, seed, in our seed starting courses and in flower farming school is that we pinch our transplants while they're still in the tray, which makes it really easy. Here's another benefit from pinching in versus, so when I'm saying pinching, I'm talking about pinching a plant that is a branching plant, for instance, like a zinnia or um, basil or coxcomb, not the sunflowers that we grow because there's only one stem, one flower. When you pinch that branching annual, not only does it make it start branching earlier and you get more, um, more branching earlier in the plant's life, but here's the other thing that I have never really thought about before, but it is so totally true. So if you don't pinch that first stem that grows up, let's just say it's a zinnia like I was cutting yesterday, you have this beautiful zinnia um, it's coming up through the netting. Well, it's got all these branches on it, which have, you mean you're cutting below all of them and you can't just pull it up through the netting because all those branches get caught, which you're gonna strip them, but you gotta get it out of the bed before you can do that, right? And the point is to not pull the netting up any higher than you installed it because that makes it a mess for harvesting for the rest of the season. When you pinch those annuals and you do it early, you don't have so much of that branching going on from those central stems. You have strong single stems that just have leaves on them. So it makes cutting through the netting even easier. So I thought about that yesterday and I thought, you know what, I have never really thought about that before. Um, so I want to show you, um, we sell two kinds of netting and what net, the netting that home gardeners typically use, this is how it comes and this is green. Um, the commercial version of this is actually white and they came out with this probably about three or four years ago. See the sun's peeking through and about blinding me. Um, 
and people, the home gardeners love it. You literally cannot see the netting on my bed that we're about to look at. I mean, you won't even be able to tell it's netted until I get you really up close and you know that there's stakes there. So it comes, they package it, we don't. Um, it comes from them vacuum packed and we put a sticker on it that's got instructions on it. But here's what I wanna show you. And you know, I would have loved to have done this on screen, but you know, not having a film crew, it would have been kind of crazy. So this is the roll that I used. And what happens is this roll is actually much wider or taller, however you wanna look at it, than what you need for this bed because this can actually be used for vertical trellising, like for beans or peas and stuff like that. So you just cut it, it's just plastic, it's very simple to cut. So when I opened and peeled the package off of this, I literally got one of my rocks and I just weighted this end down, the end that's the open end, um, weighted it down next to my bed and I just unrolled it, keeping it nice and neat and rolled it to the end of the bed and then I cut it. So that was the length of the bed that was cut it that was cut it that was cut so and here's another tip that I want to tell you I recommend that you do netting all by yourself having a second person particularly a spouse um, can lead to a little bickering even with the best of relationships because netting I've been netting for 23 years and I net by myself I net 100 foot beds I used to net 150 145 foot beds and you can, it's much, it's a job and people always say, oh, let me, I'll come help you. No, thank you. I, it's just much easier for me to do it alone so that you can keep focused and keep your mind on what you're doing. So here's what I recommend that you do it by yourself. You need to have, we use two by two inch by two inch oak steaks. They're actually sold. Um, as tomato steaks and they're usually like five foot tall we actually cut them down to about 40 inches because we don't need them that tall and when they're that tall um, 60 inches it's really hard to pound them they're just much taller than they need to be so um, get your steaks and you have to this netting will hold the heaviest canopy of flowers it's the steaks that's the weak link so you need to have a T-post, the metal T-post work really, really well also. Um, but we use two by two tomato steaks and I cut them. Um, they last us about mm, anywhere from three to five years before they rot on the end and then we burn them or you know use them for firewood. Um, so you need to have your steaks and for this three by 10 foot garden, I had to use eight steaks since my garden beds are split but if you have one continuous three by 10 foot bed, chances are probably pretty good you only need six stakes. Um, you do not want those little metal with plastic covering that look like bamboo stakes, they are not strong enough. Um, and staking stakes are the weak link as I just mentioned. Somebody's shooting a gun it sounds like. Um, so you have to have the stakes and you have to have the netting. And so what I did, and I'm gonna explain it to you and then I'm gonna show you. And if you go to the product on our store, um, there is a video on there also showing how to do this. I'm saying that and I'm pretty sure there is. There will be here soon, if not. So what I did, doing it by myself, um, is I cut the netting to length as I just shared with you. And see this stuff is really easy to get tangled. So that's why I think it's being able, when you do something by yourself, you don't feel as rushed. When you have somebody helping you, you feel rushed, and that's when the trouble starts. So I rolled it out and I cut it. Then I pitched this big one aside, and then I just sat with this end and I found where, it's gonna be kinda of hard to do sitting down here. I found the, it, the edge of this, and I just slid that edge over one of my stakes, not where it's necessarily gonna go, just to hold it. So then I could unroll my piece of netting that I'm gonna put on this bed, and then I cut the, the width. So this is, um, I, 
think this is 60 inches. And so I used four over there. So I only use four of these squares wide. So I have my first stake in the corner and let's just walk over there. We don't need to hold this. I will take this. We don't need that. So let me just look at my list y'all. I told y'all about the pinch. Um, and I told you how to get this off. So I'm gonna actually, let's um, walk over here and, I thought I was turning that around. There we go. So let me walk out here. Let me, I'm sorry, I'm readjusting this tripod so I can hold this in my hand, y'all. Sorry, you're getting ready to, don't, don't anybody get seasick on me. <laughs> How was that? All right. One more drop, I think. Oh, there it is. There we go. All right. Now watch me fall over this chair. All right. Can you believe our garden? <laughs> I mean, I still just can't believe how much it has grown, y'all. Um, and I have not watered this once. This is all, I mean, I watered it when it was planted, right? But that was it. So, we'll walk up here and take a look. And I want you, I'm going to walk up a little closer and then I'm going to stop. And you can't even tell, other than the stakes being there, you cannot even tell this is netted. Which, as a farmer, we don't really care whether people see the netting. But I know in a home garden situation, people are just really, really um, appreciative. And so we'll just go over here to this one. I'm just looking to see the netting if you guys, so you can almost see, you can see a line right there. Um, so you can see my two by two stakes and that one over there in the corner. So what I did earlier was I drove this stake in first and it's right in the corner of the bed. Things that are important to me when I'm doing netting, I always want the stakes inside the bed so that it does not interfere with mowing and weed eating and all of those types of things, right? I mean, whoever your, does the lawn at your place will really appreciate you doing that. Um, so my weed eating guy can just continue to do what he's doing and not have to worry about hitting the stakes with the mower. So I put this stake in first in the corner, and then I use that stake to loop my netting on to unroll it, and then I cut it. So you can see that there's one, two, three, four squares. So that's only 24 inches, even though our bed is close to 30, um, a little bit narrower than 36. Um, but I'll tell you that what my experience is with netting, based on maintenance and how difficult it is to reach into the middle to cut, because um, you have to remember, these plants are gonna be as tall, if not taller than these stakes. So the wider your bed, that's why we chose 36 inches, um, but I keep my netting a smidgen narrower than the bed. See, you can tell, I don't know if you can really tell that or not, um, looking from over top. Um, so I put the first stake in, I got my netting cut appropriately, and then I um, started to install my netting. And I will tell you, it was a little dicey because look how big those sunflowers are. I had to really, um, it really pays, again, to do this job timely before in, before any of the plants would really be going through the netting. So you can see that the netting's uh, probably at about 12 inches. So this end, this is coxcomb right here, um, and those sunflowers obviously are already taller. Um, they'll grow pretty tall. So actually I may move the this end up about six more inches, but this end is gonna stay where it is because look at this basil. It is, look, there's our first bud. I will cut this once that elongates and actually gets flowers on it. So the, the basil will get fairly tall, but it will not be as tall as these, um, as the coxcomb is. And looky here, there's our first. And you know, sometimes I do this, y'all. 
in a tight proximity like this, sometimes I'll just pull a sunflower um, leaf off. Actually, I'm gonna pull that one off too. And this one. And that just allows more light to come in. So this little guy, and I'm pretty sure this is in Oklahoma. Um, and so these little guys, they all have buds. Look at them, they're just beautiful. And this um, basil is really looking beautiful. And our sunflowers are budded. I'm telling y'all, you just won't believe how fast this happens. So I need to get, we'll look and see. I don't think any of the sunflowers seeds that we planted last week have sprouted yet. So these are um, the lime green zinnias. And look, those sunflowers are coming right along. And here's more basil. And this is the younger basil. So you can see this is a little behind what's over there. And this is all lemon. I planted all lemon basil. These are our Benares giant zinnias. And back here, we did plunk in the ground last week, huh? Not a one. We um, stuck some sunflower seeds in here that will be coming up as these guys are cut, which will not be long at all. Um, and you, then you would have a replacement coming along. And so, and y'all, that is a great example of why I prefer to really plant only transplants because very rarely do you lose a plant. Seeds in the ground, stuff just happens to them. Um, stuff just really, really happens. So you can see where the netting is. And let's just say that you've, um, you know, you know that the, the time is coming to the end of your garden. Um, all of this tall stuff, you would just want to cut as much as you can, which it really should be cut pretty clean if you're cutting it every week, which means you can then just lift this netting right off. And as I said, you can use masking tape to actually mark it and say where it's actually gonna go. Um, and I thought I would just show you how I'm gonna cut a couple. I'm gonna pinch a couple of these celosias. We have so many of them here. Um, and I thought, so we can get some branching going really well. So you can see, I'm gonna pinch this plant right back here. And you can see he's about 12 inches tall, but you can see there's already branching happening down there. So because I don't need, this will kind of stagger the blooms a little bit. So I'm just gonna reach back here and y'all may be a little surprised. And y'all, I'm gonna look at what I'm doing and not look through the, so that's where I cut it. So I just cut all of that off and it left, there's a shoot, there's a shoot. So this will sprout even more shoots since I've done that. And let's cut one more, especially the ones in the middle. I'm gonna do this one too. All right, looks like somebody just scissored them off. So that doesn't really leave much and this one looks like somebody's. Oh look, let's get to take him too. He's got a little bug damage. All right, see so y'all, you don't, it just doesn't seem to make sense, but the more you cut these annuals, the healthier and more rejuvenated they get. So this really, really helps your plants, but it also, in a small cutting garden, helps to um, kind of stagger out the blooms a little bit. I will tell you that our garden, even though I have cut the size back so much because we aren't, doing big production anymore. We have so many more flowers than I should have. I just can't believe how productive a very, very small garden is. Um, and it is just, you won't believe how much this little garden is gonna, especially the lemon basil. You can just never have enough great lemon foliage um, for that. And don't hesitate to pop off your sunflower leaves that are kind of maybe shading somebody else. Here's another one I'm going to take off. Um, that just uh, kind of opens up the airspace. So um, that's kind of how it is looking. And the netting should be basically, if it was all the same flower, 
it should be at the halfway to maturity height. So let's just say it's a 48, it's a 48 inch Xenia like Benary's Giants get then 24 inches is about where the netting would go. Um, but when you have a mixed bed like this, it is not uncommon at all for me to have it lower at this end where the basil is and then have the netting get a little taller. Um, what you really want to do, if you think about it, if you supported somebody by helping brace their hips, standing behind somebody, and you're gonna brace them for, you know, when kids are playing, and you stand behind them and help brace them at the hips, you can really brace somebody there, right? Because that is their pivotal point. If you do the same thing to flowers, it's the halfway point. It's not way down low, and it's not really, really high. It's that halfway point that really gives them the most support. And when the canopy, y'all, I'm gonna go back up here and sit down. And first off, you have to look at this. These heli heliopsis are really, really beautiful. This side, I forget the name of this variety, but it's a single. Look at these, these are doubles. I think this is called um, New Hybrid. They're just amazing. And the finches, you can see they're just eating them up and that is just perfectly okay with us. This is the third year um, for that plant. So, netting is really, really important, um, but you just won't even get to that point to it. If you're aggravated by netting, I totally understand it. I'm gonna help you through that as soon as we can start cutting this here. Um, but netting makes a really, really big difference. And you could, I had almost, I thought to myself that I was actually gonna do one of these beds. I was gonna use twine. Oh my gosh, it is so much more work, y'all. First off, you'd have to have twice as many stakes in that bed and then you just run string from all around the outside and then back and forth all the I mean and the twine breaks it's a total mess to take off um, and it can you know it's not reusable year after year so um, you know to each their own but I'm just saying as the professional that's what we do that's what we recommend and it works really really well um, so Let's see if we can't get this thing back down. So I did want to say that I am going to, I guess I will add, sorry y'all, I'm working on this tripod. Trying to, there it goes. Um, I am going to plant us a few sun, you know, we, we succession plant sunflowers here on our farm every week. So I am going to borrow a couple of sunflowers um, over from our weekly succession and plug them in over here. So I'll um, grab some of the really mature ones, the ones that are being planted this week, and I'll put them on one side, and then I'll grab the next week's because these sunflowers will be out of here in two weeks. So I really, really hope um, that some of you guys will post pictures of your cutting garden. Um, heavens knows we have sold enough collections that I know that there's a bunch of you guys out there just reminding you about the soil special you can go to seed start and supplies and find it there that is really pretty awesome um, the link to the netting is on here if you need that um, and I just really hope um, that you guys are gonna have a great cutting garden it's really something really fun to do so let's see if we have any questions on here I don't think we do Hey, everybody. Hey. So nice to see faces I know. So, yes, it is Miss Burns Lemon Basil. It's, um, she'll grow, some years she gets up to 36 inches. It's unbelievable. Um, and she holds up really well in the vase, but you will be surprised when you see me harvest it when it's time, how much I strip off of it. That's the number one problem that people have with um, all the basils in bouquet, especially if you're a farmer going to market or something. You have to strip like 85% of the, the leaves off. The only thing you leave is the very top. 
um, because it just it can't hold up with so much leaf surface um, to supply to 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 actually support. Um, so Miss Burns is my hands down favorite. I'm not a cinnamon favorite. I'm a fan. Um, I like the color, but it's a little dark. And um, we're always looking for brightness in our bouquet. So Miss Burns is our go-to. How many weeks ago did you start the cutting garden from seed? Well, you'd have to go back. Um, the cutting, the, these videos we've put on my blog. And I believe that the first week we talked about it, was not counted in the weeks. So that would have been seven weeks ago, and the plant, it was just too cold to plant it, but they were started. So I would say nine weeks ago, right? Nine times seven is 63. That'd be about right. Um, so we started everything from seed and transplanted it. And I did plant them smaller than normal. And then on top of that, we had such really cool weather. This, these, I had row cover over it for, shoot, a couple of weeks after we planted it because it was just so very, very um, chilly at night. Susan, I picked Orlea and False Queen Anne's Lace. I find one of them is dropping stuff. Am I picking too early or too late? Too late. And it can be either one of them. And so here's the little narrow path you have to find for false Queen Anne's lace and be careful because that's what marks my arms up. If you can see, this is nothing. You ought to see with my, my legs. Um, that's, I'm allergic to false Queen Anne's lace. Um, and to be really careful, we cut the false Queen Anne's lace when it is really, um, how do you want to eat before it even starts to spread at all? Um, and sometimes it's a little floppy, but if you strip it completely and get it inside and let it sit overnight, it'll usually firm up. And even if it doesn't get firm, Suzanne will use it in a mixed bouquet by putting it in the middle um, because it'll start dropping. Once it starts to spread, it's just a matter of days before it starts dropping pollen. And Orlea is the very same way. Both of those, just like Ami May, just all of them, you need to cut earlier than later. You just have to find how early can you cut it and still have it not um, wilt. How do you attach the netting to the stakes? Great question, Joanne. Um, it's, it's just sitting there. It's taunt. Um, so what happens is um, I start with that first stake in the corner and I put the netting on, and then I pull, um, just pull the netting over to the other side of the bed on that end, put the um, post through the hole that it's supposed to go with, and you're not pulling it really, really tight, so we're at the end of the bed, okay? You and I, the bed is running this way from me to you, and you pull the, the netting taut, not tight, and drive your stake in. Then you go to the other end of the bed and you do the very same thing. You pull the netting taut, then find the place where to put your stake in the ground that holds it tightly and it just stays up on the stakes. There's no need to attach. I mean, I blessed somebody's heart last year, I think it was. Somebody went to all this great extra work to make, or actually I think her husband did, to make ways to attach the netting, and it's just not necessary. Um, if it's pulled taut, it'll just sit there. Um, so that was a great question. Lisa, how far into the ground will you pound the two by two stakes? Love these talks. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you know, I always over or underestimate. I would say they're in the ground eight inches or so. And what happens? <coughs> Depends on what I'm staking. When I'm, st I just netted the um, Lysianthus, which Lysianthus, I put stakes every four or five feet because we plant them so densely and the canopy will be so heavy. Um, I may, I pound them a little deeper 
because if it rains and rains and rains and the ground gets soft, that's what you have to think about. Um, if you don't put them very deep and it rains for two or three days and there's a heavy canopy of blooms and they're getting wet and they're getting wind blown, it'll just take those, those stakes right over. So deeper is better than shallower. And our ground is pretty soft right now because we've had so much rain. So these went in really easy. Um, and there is a thing called a um, stake driver, pounder. I mean, places farmers know what I'm talking about. Um, I have three. I don't use them. I prefer a sledgehammer, actually. I feel like I have more control over... If you're putting stakes in with netting up, which that's the way you do it. I mean, you put a stake in, you slide the netting over. Then you stretch it across the bed, across the end, and then you drive the stake. If you're using one of those pounders, it's hitting the netting. Um, so I always, everybody says you, I get messages all the time. You do know they make pounders. Yep, I have three. They're different weights and sizes, um, but they interfere with the netting. And um, also, it's not as easy, for me anyway, to keep my stakes as straight as possible. And they aren't very straight, but they'd be even worse if I used the pounder. So I use a um, sledgehammer. I don't know how much it weighs. And I have just... I've just got my little system down, you know? I mean, I stand it on the ground, put it up on my foot, then I slide my hand down and get it close to the head and pick it up. And, I mean, I I haven't torn my shoulders out, so I, it, it does pretty good. And I'm not a super strong person, um, but I've just figured it out. And that's a job that you just want to be really careful with doing because you can smash fingers. Um, We use a sledgehammer too. I mean, I got a sledgehammer for Christmas, y'all, and I was really pleased about it. So, um, and mine has the long handle. Um, I got a short handled one, you know, everybody, my husband, and back when my dad was still with us, they were all always trying to find ways to make my work so much easier, and oftentimes they did do that. Um, but if the sledgehammer is a little bit on the heavy side, that means when it hits the stakes, it drives it better. If you have a lighter sledgehammer, then you have to drive it harder. So um, that really works for me. How tall are your sunflowers when you pinch them? You do not pinch sunflowers. Well, we don't pinch. There's, so let's back up, Trisha. There's two types of sunflowers. There's branching sunflowers, and then there's single stem sunflowers. We only grow single stem cut flowers, I mean sunflowers because they are the best cut flowers. Branching sunflowers are great for a home gardener, um, but for a commercial grower, you would never um, use, they just don't hold up long enough. They drop petals, they have soft necks. Um, and in this garden situation, a branching sunflower would take way too much space. Excuse me, because they do branch, they need a lot more space. These sunflowers are, um, what are they, like six? I've lost my seed collection. I think they're like six inches apart in all directions. You could never do that with a brancher. So to get a branching sunflower to branch better, yes, you should pinch it. Um, and you pinch it when it's about 12 to 18 inches tall and you pinch it down to four leaves. Um, but that's not what you do to single stems. They don't get pinched at all. Susan, waiting excitedly for your fall class sign up. I'm worried it'll be too late in the season for me to learn and plant for my spring season. Is there a class I can take prior? Yes. So, Susan, glad you said that, and I'll talk about that for just a minute. So, Dave Dowling's class, <clears throat> Flower Farm, we have two Flower Farming School online right now. Mine is the basics of getting your business started and getting a farm set up because it is so very different than gardening. And then how to grow annual crops and all that kind of stuff. Seed starting, pinching, what to grow, how to harvest it, and then who to sell it to and how to sell it, and that whole nine yards. Um, that class runs in November. Dave's class, which is just the next step, which is bulbs, perennials, and woodies, his class actually is running in late summer. 
Dave's registration, and we're just making a chart this week that'll be posted on our website because I know this is confusing to people. We have so many different courses now with different registration dates. It's very confusing. We're going to have a chart that shows it all at a glance. Dave's class goes on sale for registration June 21st through 26th. My class is also going to be on sale at that same time. And my class still doesn't run till November, but we're offering it because people that want to take his class and bye y'all. People that want to take his class and my class want to buy the bundle because when you buy the bundle, it's $50 off to buy both classes together. And then if you're on our email list, you get an early bird special that you can also apply to that. So if you want to do that, you can do it next week, the 21st through the 26th. You need to sign up and get on our email list because we won't let you miss registration and you get those early bird specials. So back to what you were asking, and with Dave's class, if you are gonna sign up for the bundle, you get the Cool Flower course, which is Cool Flowers Beyond the Book for Flower Farming, um, free, with it comes with his class. If you're only gonna take my class, then you can buy the Cool Flower class, it's 20 bucks. Um, and that'll get you all, get the book, watch the free online video book study that you can claim when you purchase the book, and then watch the online course that takes what you learn from the book and that book study and apply it to flower farming. So yes, you should definitely be able to get up and be running um, before my class starts in November. Um, and you just won't be sorry. It's just, we just have so much information, y'all. We keep adding to everything. I just made a um, great video for the a bonus video for flower farming school of um, just walking the garden and talking about harvesting and what's netted and what's not. And um, anyway, I'm definitely interested in the fall classes. Um, and so, you know, the thing about online courses for our schools, you know, they're over six weeks. You then get to be in the private Facebook group. That's where we spend most of our time. You know, I'm no longer perusing um, a lot of the open Facebook pages because we're over helping alumni and, you know, new students over on our page. Um, so we would love to have you. And you can register um, June 21st through 26th, but my class still won't run till November, but you can benefit from the bundle if you want to take Dave's course. And let me just tell you something. I don't know if y'all caught him this morning on the radio with Nikki Jabor, the weekend gardener. Um, oh my gosh, he is just, he just spills information. Every, he just oozes it. You're like, it's like sun rays. Um, any question you have, he will answer in the live Q&As if he doesn't address it in the course. Um, and the fact that you can refer back to this stuff is just amazing. I noticed that your pro cut there is one main bud and then several little buds. Is that okay? So, I didn't notice that. Sometimes that does happen um, and it's all about temperature and day length. Um, actually, funny you should say that um, the pro cuts that I cut this week for our commercial customers, this week's crop has multiple little buds all up and down the stems. Last week's didn't have them, and next week's don't have them. Why'd that happen? I have no clue. Same pack of seeds. We buy huge packs of seeds. So it's all about conditions, weather conditions. Um, so sometimes they will get a little bud right where the leaf meets the stem below the main bud, um, but we just strip them all off. For the maximum base life, we only leave one leaf at the top and the bud. Hey, Janet, have you read Cool Flowers? If so, take the book. Yo, so Jessica is recommending doing that. And I just love, so Jessica is one of our students. I just love how you guys help each other. Oh, Susan, so yeah, so you can actually bundle and buy both the courses. So if you buy, my course and Dave's course individually is $495 each. If you buy them together, 
they're $940, that saves $50 off. And then if you get the early bird special, which is only good for the first 24 hours of registration, um, then you get another $50 off. So it's worth the deal. Um, and if you're one of our students, if you have taken any of our online courses, that means you're one of our students and you'll get a special offer actually to have $75 off. So um, you guys can um, decide what works best for you. And the thing about the online course is that is so awesome. There's a phone app for the course. Um, so it's really easy to watch on your phone and refer back. And I don't, if you haven't watched it, go back through our Facebook Lives. Um, Dave and I did a talk with three of our students, um, Emily, Daniel, and Jonalyn. Um, both, all three of them took both of our courses, but they are just rocking their businesses, and even through the pandemic. And um, it's just, it was fascinating to listen to them. And the thing they talk about is just how much they refer back to the course we have them organized in a way that you can go look up tulips or you can go look up whatever annual you're growing or if you have a question about business and setting up the sales tax or anything, um, it's just real easy to refer back. So gang, I'm gonna get off of here. Um, I appreciate everybody joining me here tonight and I think we'll be cutting flowers before long. So I hope your little garden is coming along and um, now that I have the netting up, I feel a lot better because you know what other, other thing the netting does? It keeps your dog from possibly plowing through the flowers. It kind of stops them. Um, so I was glad to get that up today. Tucker has been really, really good. I think the rocks kind of deter him, but um, now I feel better about him not plowing through it. So please like and share this broadcast. That's what really helps me the most. That makes Facebook like us and that means they show our posts to more people and um, we really really appreciate that and um, don't forget about the special that goes off tonight on soil and nutrient and um, post your questions I'll visit back a little later if I haven't answered them in this broadcast and and try to address them so um, we really appreciate it so till we meet again ciao